Hi there and welcome to this video for Senior Physics looking at quantum mechanics. In this video I'm going to explain using the FET simulation about atomic spectra. Now basically if you go to the um, website link that we've got here and also I've put this up on iTunes U, um, this will allow you to go and have a play with the, um, the simulation itself. But first let's, um, let's have a look and see what happens when we um, load, the, load the page and um, how does this help us understanding atomic spectra. So when you when you open the um, page up, what you're going to do is you're going to open up um, this simulation, which you'll see here. Now, I've, yeah, I've, you'll see that I've got a, a number of things which I've collected here um, just to help with respect to time. Now, what you're going to get here is uh, you're going to get a battery, and as a result, this is like our um, discharge tube. And inside our discharge tube, we are going to have our atoms. Now, you can either have a single atom or you can have continuous atoms. Now, what, what will happen is once you start the, um, the process going, you basically have electrons which are fired at the individual atom. And the result is, what happens is, you'll notice that when those individual electrons are, are given, um, sorry, when those electrons hit the atom, they energize the electrons within the atom itself. And you'll notice on the right-hand side here that um, we're getting this electron, which is, which is pushed up to this high energy here. And as a result, it's coming off and giving off a specific um, photon. Now, you'll notice that we're looking at hydrogen here. Um, and you can see where the energy um, is being, being converted. Now, we can change how that energy is given. And you'll notice that if I lower my voltage on this on this um, atom, that every time that electron hits the um, the atom here, there is not enough energy to energize the electron inside the atom to this higher orbital. But as I increase it, I'll be able to actually add to the um, add to the energy. Now, if I increase my um, number of electrons. Okay, so I've got more electrons going off. You'll notice there's still no effect on the on energizing the um, the uh, the electron inside the atom to that higher level. So obviously, it makes no difference if I increase the the intensity of the electrons. I need to increase the amount of energy that they've got. So if I increase up to heat up on the voltage here, I now have enough energy to now produce these, um, these electrons. And what's happening is the electron is given enough energy, it can go to that second energy shell, and then it drops down to its ground state um, on, its, uh, on its orbital. Now, how do we view this? Well, basically, if I open my spectrometer here, you'll notice that I'm producing some ultraviolet rays which have been generated in these far end um, these far ends of the of the electron. Now, that's all well and good when we're dealing with one single um, atom. But if I now look at multiple atoms which are generated, what we'll notice is as we get everything moving, and I'll put the squiggles in so we can see it, you'll notice that we're now generating our bands for hydrogen. There's our red band which is generated. We've got our far ultraviolet ones, and there's our purple, our dark blue, and uh, light blue. Now, if you remember back to my video earlier, you noticed that the hydrogen atom that um, Johann Balmer came up with had exactly the same um, spectral lines which are produced. So we can work out what those spectral lines are. And one of the things that we can do quite nicely is just take a screenshot of that that um, that element. Now. The beauty about this is I can slow this down and we can see what's happening in slow motion as to what's happening. Now, if you look at the squiggles here, you can see the electrons going up to those higher energy levels. And then you can see every so often you're getting that red and those blue um, bands coming off. And these are the red and blue bands that you can see forming in the actual, um, in the actual discharge chamber coming off at specific wavelengths and this matches identically. 
So let's run it at full speed as normal. You can see the blues coming off there. Now what happens if we then change the element? Now the beauty here is we can actually change and do four different. So we can look at Mercury and you'll notice that the bands change for Mercury. So we've got a different set of orbitals which are, spread, are present in, in Mercury. And as a result, we're getting off different bands which are generated um, from the electrons, energizing the electrons inside the atom. Now, what do these numbers represent? Well, with the individual atoms, they are being energized to different shells. So if it's showing up as a nine, it's showing up on the ninth energy shell. If it's one, well, it's a ground state. And obviously, if it's, it's two, it's at the first energy level. And again, you can see we've got different bands here which are generated for our, um, our mercury. I change it again, and we look at sodium. Now, you can see sodium here. We've got lots of yellows and, and, and oranges coming out. And when you look at a sodium lamp, what is the color of it? Well, it's yellow and orange. It's got that orange color. Those are the colors of your normal street lamps. And again, if we slow this down, you can see we've got a different structure in our shell orbitals, but you should be able to see the orange and yellow um, colors coming off. Because we're only getting certain bands, okay, we're only working on these main um, energy levels, one and two, as it's moving through. The ones higher up are basically going to be of a different wavelength and not being able to pick, be picked up. So there we have sodium. And the last one we can look at is neon. I'll speed that up. Now you can see neon's got a huge energy level um, between one and two. And then we've got some very finite energy levels here. And what we'll see here is a load of bands which are generated here for neon. Now remember, neon comes off as a fairly pink light. And as a result, we're gonna be having bands down towards that red end spectrum of the, of the neon, of the, um, um, electronic uh, electromagnetic spectrum so we've got these nice bands which are generated now how does this help us with respect to looking at the other the other um, elements well if we just move this across what I've done here is actually taken all of our different um, uh, spectral analysis and you can see here's hydrogen we've got mercury here we've got sodium here and we've got neon here and you'll notice all the bands basically are sitting at different um, wavelengths. And because they're at different wavelengths, this is directly related to the energy shells which you've got in each of your atoms. And that's therefore a fingerprint of the type of element that you might have. So if you didn't know what your element was, then you could energize it and then do a spectral analysis of the actual um, gas that you've got. And as a result, you would then be able to work out what element is present in a gas, an unknown gas that you might have um, created, or it might be in a substance which you then t um, take up into a, a gaseous state, and you can work out what elements you've got in the overall um, substance. You work out your composition, your percentages, and as a result, that gives you an indication as to what's present in that unknown substance. So let's just recap. Basically, what we're looking at here is we're looking at our energy levels moving between one one shell and the next we must have the specific amount of energy to allow this to happen if it doesn't then what we'll notice is that there will be no electrons or no photons which are generated as you can see here none are actually going to be created we get no photons until we get the right specific amount of energy and then as a result the uh, the electrons can then move up to those energy levels Remember, they're unstable in those energy levels, and then they drop down to ground state, giving off a photon. If I was lo looking at an absorption spectrum, I'd be shining light on these, and that would give them enough energy to actually um, be liberated. Okay, well, I hope you found that useful. Um, it's, the idea was to give it a, um, a visual idea as to how um, the atomic spectra works. I have um, put together a an activity that allows you to work through with the various um, simulation that we've got here and to start explaining how those things actually work. So I hope you found that useful. Um, I do hope that you will join me again and do check out some of our um, other 
courses that we've got on um, my website, aussiephysics.com. Um, we have some chemistry and physics and a lot of physics um, on there. All the resources are free for you to download. So by all means, subscribe to that. Get on the, um, the, mail, the mail list and uh, any new stuff that I pick up, I'll send you um, details. So thanks for watching. I um, hope you found it useful. I look forward to you meeting me again. Bye for now.